Hello, this is Linda with The Edge. Today I'm going to go over integrating the Edge in QuickBooks. First things first, should you integrate? Before deciding to integrate, you should look at your current accounting process. Do you have an outside accountant that handles all of your bookkeeping? Do you have a bookkeeper on staff? Do you only send your information to your CPA at year end? You will need to decide if Integrating best serves your needs. It's possible to record your transactions in QuickBooks manually. There are various reports available on the Edge, but if you want to use the Edge GL report, in my opinion, one of the most valuable tools, you will need to perform a faux integration. The GL report is only available if the GL accounts in the Edge are mapped to accounts in QuickBooks. In order to do a full integration, you will need to have a copy of QuickBooks available for mapping. You don't have to post if you don't wish to, but you will need to have QuickBooks if you wish to use the GL report. This is an example of the GL report in the Edge. This one is run as a summary for a month. This report can be run to show detail for a specific day for a range of days. It's a very valuable tool to identify errors in the transfer of information or to clarify how a transaction has traveled through the general ledger. If you did want to enter manual entries to QuickBooks or if you have an off-site accountant to whom you provide reports, this is a good one to use in conjunction with other edge reports such as daily activity and sales tax. You can only post to an off-site QuickBooks with the multi-store version of the Edge, and the PC that has QuickBooks installed must have access to the Edge. If you have an outside accounting firm, you will have to consider how will they access your QuickBooks. If you use the Edge multi-store software, you can create classes in QuickBooks to designate transactions from Store 1, Store 2, etc. However, if your stores are separate tax entities, it is not recommended that you integrate with QuickBooks. The classes function in QuickBooks does not separate information to the degree needed for two or more distinct tax entities. You must have at least one PC where both the Edge and QuickBooks are licensed to operate, and this PC will be used for the integration setup and for daily posting. So which QuickBooks should you purchase? For the purposes of the Edge, both the online and desktop versions integrate in the same way. From an accounting standpoint, there is not much difference. As an accountant, I personally prefer the desktop versions for two reasons. QuickBooks Desktop offers more reporting options and I can have multiple windows open so I can go back and forth between reports, transaction details, etc. You can theoretically open another tab on QuickBooks Online, for example, if you want to look at the balance sheet in the P&L and go back and forth, but it will usually cause QuickBooks Online to shut down after a while. For desktop versions, QuickBooks will support the current version and prior version up to three years, i.e. 2022, 2021, and 2020 are currently supported. QuickBooks is no longer offering software purchase for desktop. It's all subscri subscription-based, and the desktop subscription is yearly. However, if you are currently using a desktop version of QuickBooks that is 2021 and older, you can continue to use it if you are not using payroll or bank feeds. Your QuickBooks will continue to function normally without these supported features. You just need to ensure that you're doing routine maintenance, such as condensing your file periodically to keep your QuickBooks operating well. So if you are a new Edge user, we recommend that you don't integrate until you and your staff are comfortable using the Edge, especially if you are new to both the Edge and QuickBooks. For all users, new or not, you should discuss with your accountant the best starting date for integration. Your accountant can also assist you with reconciling your beginning balances prior to integration. You should review your inventory. Ideally, you should complete a physical inventory. Your customer deposits, receivables, payables, and credit balances. Your starting date is flexible, meaning that you can pull the date back if you wish to post activity from prior periods but you must remember that the activity from the edge will not override any information that is already in QuickBooks. 
Therefore, it's very important that you don't re-import any activity that you have already manually entered. Once the posting is made, it can't be undone. I would also recommend that you don't make any manual entries after you have determined a start date that could affect the edge accounts that will be posting over, for example, vendor payments and deposits. You don't want to create duplicate deposits. The edge requires that every feature be mapped to a corresponding general ledger account in QuickBooks, even if you don't use that feature. The structure of your chart of accounts should be discussed with your accountant to make sure it meets the needs of your business. Whether you have an existing chart of accounts or you're beginning with a new QuickBooks file, you will need to add certain general ledger accounts prior to the integration. We can provide you with a listing of accounts needed, which you can review with your CPA. You can request this list of accounts at the contact provided at the end of the video. Now, those accounts can be customized to your needs as long as they can be mapped to a corresponding account in the Edge. Every business is different and every business has certain goals, specialties, and practices. Your chart of accounts should reflect this. For instance, if your focus is on custom designs, your profit and loss category should have specific income and cost of goods sold accounts tied to custom jobs so that you can separate custom sales and costs from showcase sales and costs. If you don't repair watches, then there is no need to track watch repair separately from jewelry repair. Some stores choose to track each different type of deposit that comes in, layaway, repair, custom, etc. Some stores will only track a few or none of these and simply call them customer deposits. What you want your reporting to look like is absolutely up to you and your accountant. A note on the chart of accounts, if you use account numbers initially, you should use account numbers consistently when you add a GL account going forward, especially if it is an account tied to the edge. This will help prevent posting errors. This is especially relevant to QuickBooks Online where we have encountered some issues on subaccounts. The Edge only uses one customer through which all the payments will flow. Our suggestion is to name this customer Edge POS 2022 or something similar. We recommend that you create a new customer periodically, perhaps annually, so that your posting time doesn't become bogged down. By adding the year to the customer name, you can easily track when you may need to refresh your POS customer. When the deposits come through, they will all be held under the POS customer, but the deposits will post in your undeposited funds account individually. This way you can make the deposits in QuickBooks match the way they will be reflected in your bank. For instance, if you make several days worth of cash and check deposits. A couple of notes on undeposited funds. If you are using bank feeds in QuickBooks, be sure to make your deposits before you add the deposits from the bank feed. Once you have made deposits, you can match the deposits coming into your bank feed and avoid duplicate deposits. If you receive a posting error and you try multiple times to post, it may create duplicate deposits. You can delete these deposits, but you must delete them individually. For users of the Edge Multistore, you will need to have a corresponding class in QuickBooks for each store. Sales and inventory data for each store will post to the class to which that store is assigned in the Edge. This will enable you to run profit and loss reports for each store as well as reporting for your entire entity. I will point out that using classes does not work very well for balance sheet reporting, so you will likely not be able to break that out unless you have all of your assets, liabilities, and equities broken out by classes. Even then, you would most likely have to have your accountant review and adjust it because QuickBooks isn't able to calculate the retained earnings entry by class. The key to using classes is to be consistent. The Edge will bring over your data based on the store the entries are tied to, but anytime you make manual entries for your G&A expenses, you'll have to use classes in order to get a clear financial picture. The integration from the Edge to QuickBooks is a one-way street. The intention is for your customer and inventory data to live in the Edge and for QuickBooks to handle your accounting. 
When you run a report from QuickBooks, what you will see is the total of your activity. If you want to find an individual sale or inventory item, you will look in the edge. The postings from the edge are taking your day-to-day -day activity and recording it in your QuickBooks, where it can be combined with your overhead expenses, assets, liabilities, and equity to give you a complete financial picture. The Edge does what the Edge does best, managing your sales, inventory, and customer data, and QuickBooks does what it does best, managing your payables and reporting your financial position. So when you're ready to integrate, you can contact me to set up an appointment to do your integration. There is no charge for this, however, you will need to have these items completed before making the appointment. You need to pick your start date. This is a goal date for starting to post from the edge. You should have added all the new GL accounts that are needed for mapping. Make sure your inventory balance at your start date is correct. If you are in a new store posting to a new QuickBooks, this should already be accurate. If you have been using the edge for a while or have just started and have an existing QuickBooks, make sure your balance in QuickBooks matches what is in the edge. Make sure that all your beginning balances for receivables and credit balances are accurate. Make sure all of your repairs, layaways, deposits, etc. are accurate. Make sure you have set up a POS customer. Make sure you have set up your sales tax vendor or vendors. Make sure your payment methods in the edge match your payment methods in QuickBooks. Make sure you have added classes for each store if you have the edge multi-store version. The Edge QuickBook integration is intended to assist you with your accounting and hopefully save you some time and effort. I'm always happy to talk with you or your bookkeeper or accountant about integrating the chart of accounts and assist with any problems that you might have, either errors or an accounting issue. If you do receive an error when posting, please either email or call support so that your case can be entered and addressed. Our support team is awesome and can help with many of the errors that you receive relating to QuickBooks. If they can't, they will see that the case is sent to me. If you have issues or questions relating to accounting and QuickBooks in general, the easiest way to reach me is by email. If I am not able to call you right away, I will respond so that we can set up a time to talk. As always, thank you for your attention and we'll see you in the next one.